is who are the businesses there, right. what's their status, how are they doing, are, are, are they being profitable, mm -hmm. what story can we share about their activities. And we've got some of that data that we're going to put together in a very short, uh, concise, focused um, presentation mm -hmm. to them. And we're going to go to them, and then hopefully we'll get, like I said, some follow-on meetings. Yeah, I've had somebody tell me once, guess what's close to Chicago? Chicago's close to Chicago. So <laughs> it's another another competitor. Mm -hmm. What have you seen in the past? Well, and exactly as Mike says, we call it leakage. We have mm -hmm. tremendous leakage, in my opinion, to O'Hare. If people would just take the time to look at the fares, mm -hmm. which are very competitive, sure. if you look at the entire travel experience. You look at your tolls, mm -hmm. you look at your gasoline, Absolutely. you look parking. at uh, staying overnight if you right. have to. Parking in Chicago is much more expensive Absolutely. than it is here. If you look at all those factors and give us a shot, that's all we're asking. Right. Just give us a shot, you know, initially before you make that decision. Uh, we've been very fortunate uh, to, to have the kind of service that we have here in South Bend. Fares are one thing. A lot of folks in this area don't like to drive through or around right. Chicago. No and question. third is a security issue. You walk into the security areas at O'Hare and you have 300 people ahead of you. It's off-putting. Yeah. Here, 10 or 15 people at the same time, it's, it's a much easier, much more pleasant experience. Well, we've got about 10 minutes left. I want to get into something. I think both of you kind of touched on it, but Notre Dame, having mm -hmm. a university presence, you coming from Lansing, Michigan State, you know, obviously right. that school is what we talk about Michigan State, you know, yeah. I mean, but, but, uh, <laughs> but Michigan State being a presence up there as well. Sure. You obviously had the, the benefit of a capital city as well, but how do those types of things figure into how the airport can really be an asset? Well, the university obviously is a, a large, um, contributor to the local mm -hmm. economy. So we need to take a look at those things. We need to, uh, in the future, uh, set up some times uh, and some meetings so I can figure out how they do travel. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it that we can do to make uh, them uh, travel with us easier, faster, sure. cheaper, all of those things. So it's, it's kind of a concerted effort. We're going to go to the airlines, but then we're going to come back into the community in the months ahead and meet with the economic leaders of the, of the area, meet with business leaders, and try to figure out how they spend their travel dollars. Right. And are they spending them with us? Right. Are they spending them someplace else? Sure. And then like John said, can we, can we have a conversation about using us, giving us a chance? And if it doesn't go well, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll wade into that battle. Well, we've talked about you know Albany and some other cities that have utilized, uh, and again they have a university presence. But talk about you know John a airports today really are economic development drivers. I mentioned that kind of in the tease, but at the same time they really are economic development drivers. Have you seen that that oh, transition? I, absolutely. Uh, a lot of folks say, well, why should I have my tax dollars go to support right. the airport? I never use it. But if they get that first package from UPS or from FedEx, they're right. using the airport. Uh, I, I, I don't know the numbers, uh, mm -hmm. actual numbers, but uh, anecdotally, folks have told us that we located here because we have good air service. Uh, bound Printing, when they were here and active, was very concerned about having air access mm -hmm. uh, to the New York uh, East Coast area because a lot of their business, their financial business was out right. there. I know that there are other firms that feel the mm -hmm. same way. Notre Dame, going back to the university, uh, being a part of the Big East, mm -hmm. a lot of travel is to the East Coast, and, right. and it's very important that they have direct access by air. Yeah, great point. We talked about you know the university presence at West Virginia to go to the Big 12. Morgantown had to make some amendments and adjustments to the airport mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the closest city was Ames, Iowa, 800 sure. miles away. So that that obviously is a huge driver. Are there best practices that we need to look at? You know that our cities maybe our size or areas our size that we can look at it and say, boy, this is a great program, might be a good fit here. Well, I, airports of our size around the country, and there are probably 100 plus of our size around the country, we, we do a pretty good job in the industry mm -hmm. of comparing metrics from one facility to another. And we're going to look at all of those in the, in the months ahead, and we'll have discussions about all of those. But the reality is, is I think that uh, the largest single difference that could occur today is the people who um, are not using the facility mm. is is come try it. Um, if we're not going nonstop to where you want to go today, <laughs> right. Right. if we get enough connectivity to that destination, then we can go make a pitch with the airlines to do that. 
but if you're not using it, it's really hard to go show the economic benefit to an airline mm -hmm. to do that when the customer is starting at O'Hare. Yeah, give us an idea, John, of the last expansion you did, how that makes it maybe more passenger friendly, more friendly for, for individuals coming in going. Well, I'm glad you said passenger sure. friendly. That was exactly why we did mm -hmm. what we did, uh, both for uh, the local folks mm -hmm. here using the facility, but right. even more importantly for those folks coming into the, uh, the area, the, the city and mm -hmm. the county. Uh, and I think the genesis of that was our realization that uh, nanotechnology could mm. be a huge player in the area right. and that we really weren't treating our passengers as well as we should. The airlines have kind of abdicated that responsibility. They've turned their backs on, uh, and, and they have to because mm -hmm. of cost, but they've turned their backs on passenger comfort and convenience and, and left it to the airports to take, the, take up that slack. And I, and I think we've done that with our new facility mm -hmm. here. Will we attract more airlines because of it? Probably not at least not for that sure. reason alone, but we certainly are making the experience much more enjoyable. It's wonderful to hear people get off a plane and say, am I in South Bend? I can't <laughs> believe I'm in South Bend. That, that makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, and you guys, give us an idea of what you did change and what was expanded. Well, we had two security checkpoints, mm -hmm. two hold rooms, neither of which could support the amenities beyond the security checkpoint. Today, when people come into the airport, the first thing they want to do is get past the security right. process. Then they're out there and Sure. In, the, in the old building, we didn't have much for them to do. Now right. we have a restaurant, a lounge, gift shop, a business center, a kid's playroom, all of the amenities that people are used to at the major airports. We have them here and it's working very well for us. Yeah, I think the, the business center is a huge, I mean, when any airport you go to, uh, you know, having the ability to have wireless and get on mm -hmm. your laptop and stuff, that's probably one big change you've seen, I'm sure. Absolutely. I mean, the traveler today wants to stay connected. Every right. time they're on the ground, they're checking uh, smartphones, they're checking laptops, tablets, all those things. And so having that ability to do that mm -hmm. in uh, South Bend, so as soon as they get off, they can start doing those things um, is, is very important. We see travelers around the country as they go to uh, Detroit, Atlanta, as they're walking from one airplane to another, they're right. doing the same things. Yeah. And what's interesting, both of you guys have talked about how do we get more passengers here Marketing is a huge issue. I know we had uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth who's moving on, but did a wonderful job, I think, in marketing. Mm -hmm. Airports our size, John, is that common? Do we need marketing people to help us get the word out? We do need marketing yeah. people, and we need them to do the very thing that Mike and I have been saying, give South Bend right. a chance. Sure. That's the whole story. That, that, that's what has to happen. Forty-some percent of the folks are using the Chicago airports that should be using South Bend. We need to turn that number around. We cut that in half. We're in great shape. Man, just have them call me. I love just driving up about an hour or so before. I know you guys don't That's like to right. hear that. You want to get them earlier, but man, for me, it's just perfect. You drive up, parking's is. cheap, those kind of things. Yep. How big of a role does maybe social media, marketing, all of those things play in today's airport? All of those things are part of the mix. Mm -hmm. we, we've got to do the social media that's active and working in the South Bend Airport. Uh, marketing within the local community is important. Mm -hmm. Building those relationships with the business folks, the economic development folks. Uh, we've got to go do those things. And so as we move forward in the months ahead, we're going to figure out um, what we do with the position that was recently left by Elizabeth. Yeah, and what are some of the next steps for you in, as you look at the airport? Maybe, I mean, besides the fact you said you are able to find the men's room, which is great now. Get, <laughs> you know how to get to your office. There for, uh, but what are some of the next steps for you as you look, move forward with the airport? Well, uh, the first thing I need to do is really understand how they do business, why they do business. Mm -hmm. It's a very successful facility. Uh, John and the team have done a great job with this place. So for me to go in and change it just right. for the purpose of change is, is the wrong thing to do. So I need to go spend some time um, figuring out what they do, how they do it, and then we'll take a look at those things. Mm -hmm. And if there's ways that we can make the customer experience better, we can find efficiencies, we can reduce costs, increase revenue, we're gonna look at all of those things together. Yeah, and we've got about 90 seconds left. Gotta ask you, what are the next steps for you uh, as you kind of transition out? We, we allow Mike to take over. Sure, I've got mixed emotion. You know, Wednesday was my last day in the office. Um, already, I'm starting to relax about snowfall. <laughs> For, for, for 35 years, that's been a constant concern. You know, how sure. much snow are we yeah. going to get? And, you know, snow in itself is one thing, but the cost of removal, yes. uh, the overtime expended, the cost of, of, of chemicals and sand to, to fight the snow, 
uh, all of the, those have been a concern. Right. You don't think about it all the time, but it's always there. Well, I know you're very proud about that. We've talked about that on other shows, and it's, it's great to, to have you on one of our, your last uh, public appearances anyway. But you talked about how you really haven't lost a lot of time. Uh, airlines have not been delayed a lot, and you haven't, you haven't closed often. No. So give us an overview real quick on that. The one closure I can remember, Phil, is the horrible winter of 1978, mm. and we were closed for a couple of days during sure. that storm. Uh, we have not officially been closed since that time. That's great. It is great. So uh, your your next step, just going to kind of relax? Relax for a while. Stay I'd like community? to stay. Uh, we certainly intend this is home. Sure. You know, I'm a Mishawaka High School graduate, so we're not going anywhere. Grandkids across the street <laughs> and, and up in Granger, we're not moving. Right. Uh, I'd like to stay involved in the community. Yeah. But for now, uh, we'll right. just take it easy, work in the wood shop. Well, thanks for all of the work thanks, that you've Bill. done in our community, for the work that you did at our airport. I think what's going to be great for you is to drive by it and even fly out every once mm -hmm. in a while um, and just look at some of the things that you were a part of as Thank it you. changes. And, Mike, welcome to the area. Thank It'll you. It'll be great to see you put your stamp on it. Can we, can we rely on you for the next 30 years as well? <laughs> Do we can... Well, I don't know if it'll be 30 <laughs> years, but, but it, is for, it is for a long term. Great. And it's great to have you in our community. Thanks for, Thank thanks for both of you being on the show. Great, great job with the airport. We'll look forward to, to flying in and out of there. And, and thanks for the work that you guys are doing currently on it as well. Thanks, Phil. That's it for this edition of Economic Outlook, the show that puts focus on key business, education, and community elements that drive our regional economy. I'm Phil D'Amico. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Economic Outlook. A portion of Economic Outlook is underwritten by Northern Indiana Workforce Board and Partners for Workforce Solutions and by the Progress Club offering women of all ages an opportunity to develop lifelong friendships, challenge the mind, and work for the welfare of children and families. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.